So it's six <laughs> oh two according to my computer, and I'm going to call the regular select board meeting to order. Um, first item is to approve. Oh, sorry. First item is set adjust the agenda. Um, does anybody have anything that we need to add or subtract or any of that? Okay, hearing none, we're gonna roll with the agenda we have. Um, next up is uh, approved minutes from last time, which was uh, May 21st. Uh, everybody have a chance to read those and good with them. Uh, I thought they were good. Can we have a motion to uh, accept the minutes as written? So moved. Uh-oh. Oh. So, uh, um, I'm gonna call that for Sherry. <laughs> that also <laughs> second. Yeah. This gets the second. Uh, so, um, all in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. Aye. It's everybody. So it's a unanimous pass. Next is communication from the audience. It doesn't look like our audience is very thick. I'm assuming D Barber is Darren. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So rolling right along, next is town manager's report given by Sean Fielder. Tell us what's been happening in your office. Sure. Um, ongoing planning, uh, following last meeting with the restaurant owners group to set up some outdoor seating opportunities. And we have, uh, so everybody is aware, we have blocked the entrance to the town uh, parking lot just off South Main near the blinking light and uh, we're going to take advantage of that as one public area to be using several other areas to be used and uh, the restaurant group has actually taken steps to order some tables and chairs they are sourcing umbrellas now and um you know what we're what we're working on here of course is to draw folks in uh, draw patrons not just to the restaurants but to uh, you know the downtown area if you will and of course we're going to be balancing the current social media standards uh you know the restaurants have talked to me about look we'll keep up on this stuff we're going to be doing a dance on this and uh just trying to take some baby steps to uh you know we're coming into our high uh season where you know tonight's a good example it'd be an awesome night to be outside having a dinner and enjoying the outside environment so um that is advancing nicely and uh, thanks to the select board uh, you know coming off the last meeting you said hey why don't you just start working with the group and we've kept those communications going uh it seems to me it's been a positive feedback from folks and it's a good opportunity for uh, to support commerce commerce and hard work we have um changing subjects completely we have received and processed an additional grant to support the yellow barn project this is a brownfields cleanup grant it's in the amount of thirty six thousand five hundred and fourteen dollars so it's definitely significant uh, this is going to be used to fund those activities for what has already been produced on the, what is called a corrective action plan this basically is to just help with any cleanup that might be required uh, given just previous activities on the site, there's a, an assessment that had taken place prior, actually a number of them. And, uh, you know, the intent is as we develop this and move forward on this project, we want to make sure the uh, characteristics for the site, uh, some detail here, uh, disposal of any material that goes off site is meeting the current EPA and Department of Environmental Conservation Standards. So on other parallel paths, um, we are continuing to work uh, the designers are working the architects are working on getting our project cost estimates in order determining lease details the various funding arrangements uh, with some of this information coming together over this next couple week period that's going to be determining more details in regards to schedule and next steps for the yellow barn project and we're, uh, you know, given the uh, pandemic and, uh, you know, everything that's happening around us, the planning team's been working really hard to uh, keep moving forward. So uh, we'll know more on uh, the project timeline schedules, you know, how we're going to be proceeding, as I say, over this next four to six week period, and we're keeping all options on the table at this time. Um, one thing that came up last uh, select board meeting is that we had a contract that the, uh, it was our contract to 
uh, go ahead with the select board authorizing a part-time police officer assignment uh, for a part-time officer. And unfortunately, the language in that um, uh, contract was dated and um, uh, to be blunt was, you know, could be considered sexist. So we are closely looking at various contract language as we are moving forward and we're going to ensure that we are up to, up to date on these uh, items and uh, making sure it's uh, meeting our current standards. So um, at, out of my office and our other departments will be uh, very closely monitoring this just to make sure we're doing the, you know, doing the right thing here, if you will. There was, uh, what I would add here is there was nothing malicious about what occurred last time around. I want to be clear on this, but obviously we've got to, we've got to set the bar and uh, do the right things in regards to the standards uh, to make sure that we are doing it right. So that will be covered moving forward. Okay, another reminder on the 2020 census, uh, you can find information at 2020census.gov. You can, uh, if you haven't done the census as of yet, you can complete by calling 844-330-2020. If you've received an announcement in the mail or information in the mail from the census direct, you can go ahead and uh, complete that. Um, I know I've completed one and our family has and it only takes about five to maybe seven minutes of time to complete it it's very straightforward the objective on this is to just make sure we've got good information about uh, where median you know what just some of the space information for our community uh, in regards to uh, uh, population and uh, some other questions it's really important because it helps determine and direct how various funding and programs and loans and grants across various government sectors potentially would benefit Hardwick. So it is important people contribute and be involved with this. We know as of earlier this week, our return, uh, Hardwick's, the town of Hardwick's response rate is only at 43%. And in 2010, the last census, uh, our eventual response rate was 64%. So, you know, we're getting into this uh, end of June, um, you know, uh, timelines coming up. So please folks, if you haven't participated, please do so, it's important. I did meet earlier this week with the architect uh, that we're working with on the townhouse. Thanks to Sherry, she was involved with this as well, rec representing NEK Arts. We are looking at uh, doing an upgrade on the fire escapes and making some improvements there. Uh, with the architect's information in order, it's going to put us in a position to uh, try to just get some ballparks on what costs might be looking at. And then the intent with this is we uh, move forward with uh, Sherry's been assisting on this, NEK Arts has, I appreciate that working on a grant application that's due late July uh, to try to see these improvements through. So it's, uh, we're seeing some really nice design uh, concepts come out. So we've got uh, some good opportunities to uh, look at going there. I want to uh, just tell everybody who is on the town. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just a question about the townhouse and the um, exterior stairs. Is there, um, do we still have roofing issues needs there as well? We do. Yeah, we, we yeah. do have some roofing needs. That's correct. Is that would is it possible to pull that those needs into the grant or not? We um, the way I've thought about this, Eric, is uh, as of now the way we're going about it is we're focused on the uh, escapes and uh, ADA access, and mm -hmm. uh, we did talk about this issue. Uh, we haven't compiled these. It's something we can evaluate. Uh, the way I've been thinking about this is uh, maybe there'll be another opportunity. Um, I, I am, uh, you know, we're hearing a lot of information about, well, maybe there are going to be some type of stimulus grants and opportunities coming up, you know, given where we are economically as a state and country. So the way I'm thinking about this, it behooves us to just get some information in order as far as, okay, what is it you might need, you know, as far as square of roof size, the material, and then we could consider adding it to this grant package and or having it available for another. So the answer is right now, no, but I think, uh, Sherry, you could provide some input on this. If we want to incorporate it, I suppose we could for this upcoming round in July. Uh, so the application that's due in July is the Vermont Arts Council Cultural Facilities Grant. Um, and generally they um, don't really Roofs are not one of the things that they look to fund. Um, so I don't know how, you know, and it, it, it's not going to be, a, um, I think it might just get really too big, you know, for that particular thing. But we can look at other funding sources.
resources for the roof. You know, Preservation Trust has a grant that comes up in the fall. Um, we, 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 I have it in mind and we're, you know, we're trying to identify the best sources for the, for the various things, but cultural facilities really likes to, um, you know, if I can say that they, li they like to fund, uh, accessibility and safety and like wiring things that have are connected with safety stuff, you know, anti fire, et cetera. So that's kind of been the focus. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. Keeping that roof in mind. Uh, for what it's worth, I, I, I don't think we're, we're not into a, um, uh, it needs to be done, but if we had another year or two before this were accomplished, I think we're okay. I'm not aware of any leaks. Uh, you know, those yeah. sheets are no. secure. There don't seem um, to be any. Because the active leaks were back in, you know, 10 or so years ago when, uh, when the front vestibule part, that addition, when that roof got replaced and the, um, and the tower roof got done uh, with Leahy funds and uh, the full roof, while it doesn't look great, it doesn't seem to have any active leaks. And it, it, there are definitely issues there, but we might be able to squeak by for a while. Any other questions on that? Okay, so just a couple more items. Uh, we are uh, next week, this next week, we've done advertising on the town's website, Front Porch Forum. We've done some phone calls. We've done some handout uh, flyer distrib uh, distribution posted at the post office. We are this next week, starting early Monday morning and for the entire week, we're gonna be doing a water system flush for any of you on the town's water system. Please recall that uh, we weren't able to do a flushing procedure uh, this spring because of the construction, um, sorry, last fall, excuse me, because of uh, the construction situation with the Bridgman Reservoir, but we're bringing this back online after about a year. So if, uh, if any folks out there, any, any users, uh, residential and or business customers, uh, you know, there's a chance you would experience a little bit of cloudy or dirty water. It's been over a year since we've had an opportunity to do this flush. It's a normal preventative procedure for a public water system. If you do get brown or cloudy water, our recommendation is go ahead and run the cold side and it shouldn't take too long. So that's, you know, that's an open-ended statement. You should uh, see a clearing uh, if you happen to get any cloudy, cloudy or brown water in a pretty quick amount of time. Um, we're going to be doing, this is going to be an early morning procedure, generally starting at about 3.30, running till about 6.30 or 7 on a given day. And we're planning to start up in the Bridgman area, work down into the village area, work down into the South Main uh, area, uh, and some of the residential areas around Lower Cherry and some of those streets. And then where we finish off is along the Wolcott uh, Street section run. So uh, that, again, kicking off Monday morning. We are uh, continuing to adapt our operations across all of our departments for, uh, you know, given the state guidance for business practices with uh, COVID-19 and the state of emergency. So um, this includes in our town office space, this is going to be the standard moving forward until further notice. We're, we're trying our best to do uh, business via email and phone. You know, we we're starting to see a handful of uh, limited appointments. So uh, visitors, uh, customers, business folks take uh, interacting with our various offices. Just check in direct with the given office is our suggestion uh, in advance of your visit. Be advised if you're gonna be allowed into the building for your business, you are gonna be asked to wear a mask. If you don't have a mask, uh, you're not gonna be able to enter the building. We do have a handful of masks available. We're, we're trying to do our best to you know, help support folks on this endeavor, but uh, we're working through this. Um, you know, the other thing I would say is that you know, we've all been experiencing some pretty, you know, it's been a very challenging couple of months here, of course, and uh, uh, the Hardwick team, uh, what I'd like to say is I think they've done a really nice job managing the situation. The business uh, changes and um, edits and updates that are, I mean, they're coming daily and hourly in some instances. So it has been a lot to react to, but uh, my opinion is that town employees, the board members, the committee members, you know, anybody that touches the town business has done a really nice job adapting. And, uh, you know, we got to keep adapting to that chain, cha uh, change. Uh, my observation is it's been a strength and it's going to serve us well moving forward. So uh, I just wanted to offer this. I want to close with this. Um, you know, the death of uh, George Floyd um, is an extremely shocking and discouraging situation. 
I think everybody's going to agree on this. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the George Floyd family and all others impacted by his death. Um, I'd urge people to act with respect and courtesy for one another and to use restraint during these very challenging times. We, you know, the pressure cooker got really turned up with all of this happening here recently. And we have a high enough anxiety and stress level and it behooves us just to uh, let's, let's go a respectful way here and uh, be mindful of this. So that's all I have tonight. Hey, Sean, um, about the food thing. Um, I had, I had Nancy Kellogg stick her head in the store door this afternoon and ask me about some kind of a community dinner with Center for Ag and the Scale House. Do you know anything about that? I, I had no idea what she was talking about. Uh, this uh, is uh, news to me, so um, I, I haven't okay. heard anything on this particular well, issue. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe it'll, it'll surface when it's better planned or something. I don't know. So I on the outdoor it, seat, go ahead, Eric, I'm sorry. Passing through, I think, I think there was something on Front Porch Forum about um, uh, oh. the Center for Ag was partnering, you know, for the regular community dinner. They're going to do it as oh. sort of a takeout event or something, so. Oh, so, and it was I'm, I'm today, sorry, right? So this, is, Sorry. This, is, this is Paul, if I could share, I know a thing or two about it because I just ate one. <laughs> um, so a generous donor through the Center for Agricultural Economy is funding dinners, which they're calling the community dinner. And they're going to be Thursdays through sometime in July from five Hardwick restaurants. So the first one was Scale House, The Village Restaurant, Connie's Kitchen, uh, Positive Pie, and Buffalo Mountain Co-op are all involved. And one has to send in an order or call in an order, I believe, by Tuesday at 9 p.m. And then they get back to you with a time to pick up your food. Ours was 5.30 today. And so if someone needed information about this, they should call the Center for Ag, you think? Center for Ag would have it it's on their Facebook page. I know, I don't know. Yeah, but Center for Ag would have the information. So that's what Just I know. for those people that don't necessarily do the whole Front Porch Forum Facebook page deal. Um, I would say. Anyway, that, there, there were 40 dinners tonight is what the person at scale has told me when I went there. Great. Huh. Sean, where, how is the, are you, was that the end of your report or is there, that was the that's end, the right? End. Yes, that's so, the end here. So do you have, um, I don't see Tom on, do you have? Um, I, I have the public works report. Or how thank you. Uh, I so for, I just had a quick, quick question. I think that's another report. Um, I noticed that up in Maxville that the, the picnic tables are still um, not allowed to be used. And so if we're, I just wasn't sure, I talked about it again at last meeting, but I just wasn't sure if we're um, promoting them downtown and if I need to have a coordinated policy. So if they're, um, so um, I'll check the, uh, Lucian, um, I'll double check the uh, guidance tomorrow. But what's interesting is for playgrounds and recreation areas, as of this afternoon, it was a different standard as compared with what's allowed for outdoor uh, service. The difference is this, if the restaurant, the restaurants would be overseeing or being involved with this outdoor uh, seating process. So if they, uh, what they're going to be working on as a part of our discussions this week, they're going to be keeping track of um, helping clean those service surfaces regularly for any of the tables that are in our, you know, the downtown area. Whereas at the recreation area, we don't necessarily have the capability to do a cleaning or just, you know, some, even a minimum cleaning procedure. So it has to do with just the differences in the restaurant outdoor service guidance versus the recreational picnic table use guidance, if that makes sense. So, so will we have the tables downtown, but they're going to pick them up when they're done using them each night or, or rope them off? Or what, what's their plan for that? The, um, so what we're doing is uh, they'll probably do a stacking procedure of some type. So not to pin this uh, or just, you know, promote it toward a particular business. But as an example, like Positive Pie now has some of their tables in their little side alley. And the way they go about it is they'll just stack their chairs up on the tables at night. So we don't have the exact uh, 
night stacking process uh, laid out, I have to admit, but the restaurant group uh, has, uh, in regards to the logistics, has said, we're going to help ensure that we have them secured in some fashion, and we're going to keep them clean in some fashion. And I've been very clear with them to say, you are going to have to be in charge of that process. And you know, let's just make sure that you're meeting up with your ACCD guidance. Uh, so we can be having a safe uh, seating environment for the public when they are using these locations. All right. I guess, I, just, I guess one thing that I kind of object to a little bit is that we're, and it's not, it's not your fault. It's, I guess they're saying the state guidance is that we're, we're allowing a lot of the stuff when commerce is involved, but when someone's just trying to catch a fish and sit at a table and have a picnic, we're not allowing it. And it just doesn't seem very consistent in that, in that way. But again, it's not, it's not your thing. We need to go to state guidance. So I hear you. I, and I, and I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you. This has been uh, this has been one of these things that has been very challenging about trying to follow the guidance because there are some inconsistencies for sure. Right, and I really they're struggling with it too. So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll roll with it. Thank you for your comments, Lucian. I appreciate it. Uh, just as a quick aside, I know today I had a call from uh, a citizen who said, "Boy, the you know the new rec playground equipment looks amazing up there at Macville." And, you know, the gal asked me about, I see it's flagged out. And I said, well, unfortunately, we're still at a point where we're not cleared to allow public use. So it's, there's another example. So we're, we're monitoring closely. And uh, hopefully as the statistics on COVID-19 uh, continue to do, uh, do go the right way, if I could say it that way, uh, some of these things will free up. So we're going to have to continue to uh, balance this moving forward. It's not going to be an overnight thing, right? Should I jump to the road foreman report? Roads, yes, roads, please. Okay, and uh, Tom has some well-deserved time off, so that's why he's out. Um, uh, this being said, I'm, I'm gonna throw this out here. Um, he actually, uh, if I have my information correct, he agreed there was a request for a uh, Make-A-Wish uh, kid uh, out of the North Hyde Park area. And if I have my information correct, um, we actually, uh, this, this individual requested a fire truck parade as their make a wish. And um, again, if I have my information correct, uh, we, uh, we, we, Tom uh, made a decision to make sure we had a Hardwick apparatus and I had a truck involved with this. And I think that's a really nice gesture on behalf of our community. So he's doing that uh, tonight, uh, as a matter of fact. So hopefully we'll see some positive press about that. And I'm glad we're able to do this for somebody uh, in this situation. I hope he's the, not driving the antique. <laughs> I can't say. Uh, okay, so on our road foreman report real quick, uh, we do have uh, Caledonian County Resource uh, Conservation District is actually leading up a bid and construction process for some improvements to the Route 14 drainage control uh, uh, system. This is basically the, the ditching area that runs uh, down near the South Main Street storage units. So the district is re leading this up. Uh, they actually are putting bids out. And uh, the, the reason I wanted to mention this up is, you know, it's touched us because we've been involved with permits. It's near one of our wastewater pumping stations. And um, there'll be some activity on this moving forward. Uh, so folks are, are aware there is a zoning permit uh, posted on the street sign right there on uh, Buffalo Street. So if there's, you know, if anybody has any questions, we have the information up. Again, the lead is the conservation district out of St. Johnsbury. The road crew has uh, been doing some really good work this, uh, this spring. And over the past couple week period, there's been grading and ditch improvements on Cobb School Road, Pumpkin Lane, Nichols Pond Road. Some of that take uh, Nichols Pond this week as an example. Uh, really gaining nice ground. Uh, road conditions are, and our roads are in very good condition. So I want to commend our highway crew there. You know, the, the back road work has been uh, really good. We are uh, a bit on hold on our paving. I don't have the details on the, pa the roads we have in the cycle, but we're waiting to just see how our, uh, how our fiscal closes out. And then we're gonna be evaluating when uh, Tom's back off break, he and I will be evaluating, okay, it's time to be evaluating our bid process, get going on this, and uh, we'll be making some moves. Uh, we won a couple of other items. We did have our uh, sweeper contractor lined up. Uh, to, they were scheduled to start a couple weeks back. Unfortunately, that contractor had some problem with their specialized piece of equipment. The latest we got is that they may be doing work. Uh, it, it potentially could be tomorrow for uh, Hardwick as well as East Hardwick area. 
but more than likely what I'm suspecting at this point is probably that work is going to be Monday. Uh, my apologies. I know I'd contacted a number, number of folks who had asked about this and we had thought it was going to be May 18th, but there's been a slight delay on this. It's going to happen. It's just that it's a bit delayed. Um, some odds and ends, uh, and then one significant item. There's been ongoing work and repairs, and uh, occasionally we lose a street sign, so the crew's been diligently uh, checking on those items, uh, seeing what might, needs to be might need to be replaced or straightened, so there's been quite a bit of work on this. Uh, they, they have uh, the, the parking spots are all painted out. I know we have a handful of crosswalks that still need to be done, so those will get worked into the cycle in this next couple, three-week period. One other thing I just want to report on, I guess it's not necessarily under the road foreman's report, but it's public works related. We did have a wastewater line break that occurred on uh, Tuesday, May 26. It was uh, in the Mackville Road area, just uh, adjacent to and downstream of the Evergreen uh, Mobile Home Park. So I just wanted to make sure this was noted. We, uh, the crew did a really nice job. As soon as this was identified, the repair was completed within about a four hour period. We did, um, uh, we did have a discharge uh, to a ditch area that would have included some untreated wastewater and you know, some, some product from the wastewater system. We, are, we don't feel that any of the, uh, this effluent would have made it to uh, Copper Brook because eventually, uh, uh, Cooper Brook, excuse me, eventually it does go down to that location. This being said, we did uh, aggressively go after getting public notice out. So we posted to the website, we posted the front porch forum. And then in addition, uh, due to our wastewater discharge permit, we are obligated to provide a report to the state of Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation and in a pretty quick fashion. So we did complete all that reporting as well. Uh, our best estimate is that you maybe a thousand or more uh, gallons potentially would have hit uh, the brook, but it's really one of those things that we're not really sure. We are not, uh, the, uh, my observation is this, I have a little bit of experience in the wastewater industry. Obviously, this is not an ideal situation, but we're, uh, I do not believe there was any type of impact whatsoever, and most importantly, uh, no impact to anybody in regards to the public health, but I wanted to just make sure we're being above board here and talking about these issues and projecting that we're doing the right thing to get the repairs done and doing our reporting. And that's all I've got uh, on behalf of the road foreman report. Great, thank you. Any questions about roads? Sean, I just have a really quick question for the sweeping. Is that just main streets? Um, yeah, Eric's point. Uh, yeah, I'm at a loss, uh, Kaylee. I don't have the exact uh, route. Um, it's, I think it's they the usually just, they, they're main. usually just doing the smaller paved streets in the Hardwood Village and East Hardwood Village. Great. Thanks, Eric. Um, next up is police department report and Aaron's not here, but Darren is on the line. So uh, Darren, is that why you're here? Or are you going to give us a report? I am. Can you hear me? Okay. Awesome. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, so um, we have a part-time officer that is currently going through the testing phase. Um, it's a, uh, kind of an arduous process and uh, they're about uh, halfway complete. Um, hopefully we'll be attending a, an academy in July. Our uh, full-time position, um, Officer Nick Steller, he's on track for the VPA in August. Um, and that's it personnel-wise. Um, our call volume has started to increase with the warmer weather. Um, we assisted state, local, and federal authorities in a, a neighboring town um, with a search warrant for drugs um, and illicit monies. Um, and we have been involved in two uh, of these parades uh, with the fire department, um, one for an, uh, a gentleman who was having a birthday here in town, and then another parade that we went up to the uh, Greensboro Nursing Home uh, for the, the residents up there. Uh, I think often they get forgotten about and uh, so the Legion sponsored that and uh, we were a part of that with one of our cruisers. That's about all I have that the, the chief passed on to me unless there's 
questions. Great, thank you. We also have, um, the chief did give us the um, incident report too in our folder, so we had that. But does anybody have any questions for Darren while he's here? Great, uh, so hearing none, thank you, Darren. Appreciate you joining us. All right, guys, take care, have a good night. Right, Thanks a lot, Sergeant. Have a good, have a good patrol. Thank you, goodbye. Yep. Um, next up is item one, which is certificate of application for Gate Salvage Yard Incorporated to continue operating as a salvage yard. And uh, I can't remember the frequency we do this at, but we do it periodically. Um, and so we have a thing we need to sign in our, in our packet, our, our virtual packet, but um, does anybody Eric, I think Eric, I think it was a three year on this most recent. Okay. And um, there, you, the the select it's the select board's prerogative on uh, how many years you want the certificate to be valid for here in this instance. Casey oh. said earlier they wanted five. Mm-hmm. It's looking for five. Has there been any problem with with the salvage yard and the way it's been managed over the last? number of decades like yeah how do we know whether there's been any um reports of any kind of mishandling of goods or whatever i mean you know didn't seem like alberta used to come with this kind of stuff no i thought so too but i don't i'm not entirely sure she, um, Alberta comes with the alcohol things. I know, but <laughs> I think in the past with this, I thought that she used to bring this as well. But I mean, you know, I suppose, yeah. How do we think, ever hear about anything, you know? I'm so. not aware of any issues in the last year and a half. I can't comment prior to that, my tenure. Right. I think we would know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I move we prove it. Can, can I just ask a quick question about the, is, is Wait, there we, an, oh, sorry. Can we have a second first? I'll second. Sorry. Illusion, Illusion second. second. All right, Kaylee, go. There was a lag whiz. I didn't mean to speak on top of you. Um, <laughs> I'm just wondering, is there, is it advantageous for the board? I mean, if it's been three years, um, is there a reason, is this the only time that we have an opportunity to ask that question with, or would we need to wait? five years to ask that question again. So does this kind of lock us in to, um, obviously it locks us into five years for the certificate, but um, I think it's important to ask that and to know if there is an issue. Um, so that's just my question is, does it, does it necessarily matter if it's three or five years? Um, and maybe why has it been three years in the past? So it looks like on the, on the document, it says you can stipulate one through five years, and it's subject to provisions of statute, state statute, or municipal ordinance. Um, so, Kaylee, do you want to amend my motion to three years? No, no, no. I I fully approve your motion. I'm just curious as to um, as to why it's been three years in the past. Yeah. So there, there is, there's definitely a state statute that regulates the, the um, salvage yards as well. So it's hard. I mean, we can, we can ask the question when this comes up, have there been any issues? But I think um, probably it would be the Department of Environmental Con Conservation or something that would really be following up on any issues. And they're going to do it regardless, I think. So... What I've been doing as we've been talking is uh, I have been doing a DEC search uh, for uh, any, uh, you know, anything in this context of a violation notice and uh, I'm not coming up with anything. Obviously it's a quick search. Uh, I sh obviously should have done this in advance of the meeting. So uh, sorry about that folks, but I am not seeing anything come up for this particular business. There we go. Good. So was the Thank you. original motion for five years? I think it was. I was just moving that we that we say yes to their application. So unthinkingly. Okay. Um, 
But but did you mean it was the intent to have it be five years with emotion? It wasn't that thoughtful. I knew <laughs> that they they were asking for five. It didn't occur to me to question the five. So, so you were thinking five. So yeah, I was thinking five. Yo, so so, and, and Lucian, your second is still okay with if we were thinking five. Sure, yep. Yeah. So Amanda could put in the notes that the motion is to approve uh, uh, um, Kate's salvage yard application for five, five years. years. Yeah. Thank you, guys. That's good, Amanda, because it gives us a little clarity too in what we're talking about. Any more discussion about the salvage yard application? All in favor of approving Kate's salvage yard application for allowing them to operate in Hardwick for another five years, please say aye. 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 That's everyone. So motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And now, since I brought that thing up, I lost my agenda. There we go. Um, next is item two, review applicants and resolution for NEK Community Broadband Communications Union District Board for represent representative and alternate representative selection. And um, we're fortunate in that we, we actually have two people who expressed interest, um, both uh, Doug McClure and Paul Fix have expressed interest in serving on this board, which I suspect is actually gonna be um, a pretty important, um, the, the communication union district I think is gonna be pretty important pretty soon. Um, they may actually have uh, have impact within the coming couple of years. So. I'm impressed with the credentials of both the members, both of our representatives. Our applicants. Applicants, right. Sorry. <laughs> or interested, interested uh, parties. Yeah. Though so Paul is already serving as our alternate. Um, so we... We have two people, they both seem well qualified for this. Um, do, before we adopt a resolution, do you, Doug and Paul, let's start with Doug, do you just wanna say something about your interest in the communication union district? Well, I believe that broadband is something that pretty much impacts every single uh, challenge that people are facing these days. Uh, kids are leaving school because they don't have the opportunities that businesses would have to start business if they had broadband. Um, I mean, pretty much every single aspect of a challenge in the Northeast Kingdom especially is affected by a lack of broadband. Um, just today, I was at somebody's house trying to help them get their computer working so they could work from home. And they were on a provider who shall remain nameless um, and they could not get enough internet speed to even be able to basically sign on to their work network. Um, so these kind of things are, and this person has, as a kid, so they had to deal with having to deal with our kids trying to work from home for school and them as well, and they don't have enough to do either one. So I think that this is a big challenge that may be hard because not as unfortunate as some communities, but it's definitely a big challenge across the board. I think it depends where you are in Hardwick. Yeah, very much yeah. so. And that's the other thing that I think needs some addressing is when you look at the state's numbers for broadband, they break it out by official towns. So East Hardwick is lumped in with Hardwick. Um, and everybody who lives in East Harbor knows that the difference is drastic in some areas of East Harbor compared to Hardwick. And the same with the Greensboro Bend versus Greensboro. Some parts of Greensboro Bend are well served. So that's something that I would like to encourage the state to think more carefully about. Thank you. And Paul, do you, I know we've talked to you before, but do you just want to say something briefly about your interest in the Communication Union District? Um, I think my recent email and previous letter pretty much say what's going on, though I am finding it quite interesting as this group begins meeting and forming um, committees, etc. There's a lot going on, as you know, in other areas with state money, everybody's running around trying to get their piece of it. So. Um, I, I do think there are quite a number, you know, with 27 people on the board, it's an interesting uh, challenge to even to have a meeting. 
and uh, there are a lot of young people on the board, which is great because there's a lot of energy, but I think having someone who's been around the block a while probably is going to be useful as well. And I'm certainly not the only over 60 person, there are a few others, but uh, um, you know, I'm seeing a value in, in having a little more experience in the area. And it's you know it seems interesting. I, it may it it may be a big job, and it'll be interesting to see how how the group decides to move forward and begin. You know I, there aren't any employees now, but there will need to be soon, I suspect. So anyway, it's in, it's interesting, and I'm I'm Great. happy to serve. So um, we have in our packet we have to. Uh, uh, where is it? Do their resolution. Um, we, so we have to do a resolution to appoint a representative. We can actually, it looks like we could have two alternates, but we definitely need one. So, um, could, uh, does somebody want to make a motion to uh, that for or that we adopt the resolution with um, Tug and Paul in a certain order? Somebody needs to be the representative, and somebody needs to be the alternate. I move we appoint Paul as the representative, and that we appoint Doug as the alternate to represent Hardwick in the uh, Northeast Kingdom. Used to be. CUD, they've changed oh. their name. I don't remember what it is. It's just CUD. <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> so uh. it, it's a, the, the NEK CB for Community Broadband, CD for CUD, but CUD for short should be fine, I would think. I'll second it, but I, I like to say CUD instead of that other thing. <laughs> Just stupid. I, right. I grew up in a dairy farm. <laughs> I hate that. I think so, it's actually starting to be referred to as a NEK community broadband. It's the new catchphrase, uh, if I'm not mistaken. All right, community Better. broadband. There we go. Makes it sound like it's going to happen. <laughs> um, so, all right. Uh, discussion on the so the motion is to to. Um, to the resolution to appoint Paul as our um, representative with Doug as the alternate. Is, is there any discussion on that on the board here? I just wonder, do either of you guys know whether you're making some agreement for like a year or, you know, is there any time uh, set up with this? Because we seem like we're doing this at every meeting. So um, I don't know what the, I assume there's a normal time time term that goes with us, like most things when you do an appointment, isn't there? Like a, uh, well, sometimes it's a one year, what, sometimes it's a three year, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's, I the one, it's a one year term. Yeah, okay. it's a one Thank year. You. Okay. Unless you need to quit first, <laughs> then we have an alternate. Right. All right. Okay, so all in favor of uh, all in favor of appointing um, Paul as the representative and Doug as the alternate to the NEK broadband um, board, please say aye. 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 That's everybody. So that's unanimous. Thank you. And it looks like I need, I'll try to print and sign that. Try to remember to print. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, thank you. Guys. Really appreciate your um, interest and willingness to serve on this because I do. I, at first, it seemed a little bit like a dream, but now it seems like there might be there might be some money forthcoming. So <clears throat> maybe something maybe something good will happen in terms of broadband in the Northeast Kingdom. 
Eric, Sorry. can I just interject real quick? Uh, Paul had asked me about, uh, and Doug, you and I have had, had, haven't had a chance to discuss, but Paul asked about what's the best way to just get information over to the select board. So um, just real quick, the way Paul had been going about things is just giving an update coming off given meetings. Uh, it, how, uh, how does the select board want to go on this? Should he run it through me or go direct to you or, uh, sorry, Paul and Doug in uh, consultation and then get information? What's preferred here? Yeah, that's so. Uh, uh, Paul, so, if you want to go ahead, Paul. So let let me have a second just to. It looks like we can expect a monthly newsletter from the governing board. That um, I guess you guys decide where, who you want me to send it to and how. But that I think is going to be the primary means of Hardwick learning what's happening. I th also think. It looks like we have another eight minutes, so I don't know, maybe I can go a little deeper on some of this, but I think we in Hardwick are going to need to be a little organized in terms of sending information back through me and Doug to the CUD. And it's not clear to me at this point that Hardwick specific needs have been taken into account by all the go-getters who formed this thing. It's not that they haven't been, I mean, they've been part of feasibility studies, et cetera. But I don't know that we on the ground have verified any of that. I don't know what the history is from Sean or you folks on the select board or these forums that have happened with various, you know, Paul Costello, et cetera and whether broadband has been part of that. So to the extent that you guys have information that can help educate Doug and I, um, Doug and me, it would be really useful. So, um, you know, there, the other thing Doug mentioned, understanding, you know, the, the fact that Hardwick and East Hardwick are lumped together. The information that exists now at the state level comes from two places. First, reporting from internet service providers, which is skewed for any number of reasons because they want to look like they're serving lots of people at whatever rate of speed helps them get more money and better loans and grants. So in many cases, they've overstated what service people are getting. And secondly, the other way things are reported is that people who've called the public service department and said, we don't have adequate service, we're trying to get it, so-and-so won't talk to us, it's going to cost $10,000 for consolidated to bring it in a line, et cetera. So, you know, there may well be people out there who aren't served or who are underserved that the state does not know about. So a big part of this is for all of us, as these conversations happen, to help funnel that information in appropriate ways. And I'm sure Doug and I can offer, you know, we'll learn how best that is. I suspect the schools have discovered something in the last few months about who's un unserved and underserved, but I haven't seen or heard anything about that so i don't know what's being done i know in other towns linden's about to do point to point wireless off of two towers to serve people the school hadn't served so there's been some community effort there i don't know i mean i i, I the fact that there hasn't been conversation in hardwick might lead one to speculate that everybody on the internet is getting it but i suspect that's not the case I, can I interject here, Paul? Please, I've Doug. Spoken, I've spoken with uh, Adam, Adam Rosen, Rosenberg, the superintendent, and the schools, uh, OSS <laughs> made a very good faith effort to try to get the service and find out who does not have the service. Uh, the two problems with that is that VTEL Wireless, which is the least reliable in the area in terms of speed, is considered served. And the second problem is that uh, I know of a number of cases where a uh, family was told, oh, we'll serve you by an internet provider and then months later or weeks and months later they still have not had service got brought out to their property so the school might think that the person is having service but they're not getting it yeah, yeah thanks so I'll, I'll just interject that um i don't uh, i'll speak for the board even though i usually decline to do this but i don't think we have any 
terrific insight into who has service and who doesn't at any granular level. Um, if that's something that we need to try to establish, um, I'm not even sure how we go about that, honestly. So, so we have grants for feasibility studies through the CUD, and I guess Hardwick should consider that our investment in having joined the CUD. And so it'll be our job to see that those funds get to provide whatever research we need locally. And if there need to be community fora or people walking around in the middle of the end of a class oh. just to see what's, you know, that I'll certainly lobby through the CUD to see that that's happening where it needs to happen. Yeah, I think that's. I don't think Hardwick should have to do. Sorry. Kaylee? I was, just going to, I was just going to say to answer the very first question, I personally would love to read a monthly report. Maybe that could be included in the town manager's report. And then if there's anything, Paul, that Paul and Doug, that you feel like the board needs to discuss or particularly look at, maybe that can be added to the agenda. But I'd love to see those monthly newsletters um, be a part of our packet whenever those come out. Yeah, they could so just go into our... Um... Google Drive folder or, yeah, as a part of the packet. That's a great idea. All right. Um, so, so look, I, we have two more minutes and I do have something very critical in those two minutes. So I sent one of those newsletters calling out the mission statement of this board because our next meeting, which turns out to be the 11th, not to the 18th, is when we're going to vote on the mission statement for this organization. So tomorrow I have to get information in. So I'm hoping that some of you at least looked at that newsletter I sent Sunday and clicked on the mission statement part and read the mission statement. Or if not now, have a look at it in the next 14 hours and make comments to me so I can get them in to others in the C CD. But, you know, there are going to be some things because of the urgency of these things that w if we want to have input on, they're going to have to happen sooner than waiting for the next select board meeting. So I tried to present that early. Um, I looked at the material you sent. I didn't, nothing stood out to me in the mission statement as problematic or but if anybody else has I, I, so we I, have till tomorrow to provide feedback it sounds like right you do and I made some feedback to help generalize it and they had a word future proof in there and I thought well nothing's future proof we better be more careful about that so I don't think there's anything significant but again now's the time to have comments because it's going to be a lot easier to change it further on so thanks yep understood thank you and thanks doug for joining the effort as well okay. um we're going to move on to uh item number three which is the water and sewer budgets and casey has joined us and i'm suspecting you're gonna share your screen yes okay. all right can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. I like your I like your dual access here, your video on one and your audio <laughs> on the other. Yeah, it works better for me that way. Um, okay, so before I start, um, I did have a question. Did you guys earlier in the meeting add the VLCT local resolution that they wanted us to do? That's did coming you, up. It wasn't on the agenda, it was one that needed to be added. Did you oh, add it need to be added? No, we didn't. Yeah. We didn't. Okay. Do can we okay. do it under new business? We can do it under new business. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Casey, I lost track of that. That's okay. Me too. Um, it is in your folder under Vermont local government resolution. So, okay. Right. Um, do you want to do water or sewer? Do you have a preference? Water first. Yeah, it always starts with water and then the water turns okay. into the sewer. All right, let me just get to my share screen. Um, 
Okay. So can you see this now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's not, I mean, I don't know. I guess I can try to make it a little bit bigger. No, it's, it's good for me. Yeah, it's good oh, for funny. Okay. All right, so I'll go. Okay. Okay. So I've made some notes on here. Um, we really did try to keep it to the absolute bare minimum um, because we know it's a challenging year and we, we certainly try not to do too many increases. Um, capital transfer was one of the big things. Um, when we get to the capital plan, there are definitely things that need to be done and it's really important that we set aside for those. So we did increase the capital fund transfer by 4,000 from last year. Um, that's, we didn't feel we could go any less than that at this time. Um, so we have a few reductions. Um, utilities, we expect to see a reduction due to the solar credits that from the Novus project that we participate in. And the salary and benefits, those are basically just a percentage of the total salaries and benefits. So you've got your health insurance costs built into there and any salary increases, et cetera. Um, so other than that, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that we did not change. The overall increase is 1.62% is what we are proposing. And um, so we tried to be as skinny as possible. So I can't help but notice that um, our budget is well below our last actual. I suppose the current year's budget is as well. What was that it's, about? It's the depreciation of 73,000. It's the depreciation, if okay. you back that out. Um, okay. So the auditors do, because we don't know what the depreciation is going to be until they do the audit. So that's, it's all in the depreciation. So depreciation in this case, so I usually think of depreciation as being a, um, it's like on our on our fixed assets, right? The, the, yeah, the stuff, the, the value of it going down over time. Right. So I usually think about depreciation as being um, either either it's sort of ephemeral. You're sort of tracking. Well, either on the tax in the tax world, right? Then you're you're actually depreciating something over time for for tax reasons. Or and you may be, mm -hmm. um, if you're looking at depreciation for something that needs to be, re equipment that needs to be replaced, then you're saving toward re that replacement. And, but in this case, what does that line mean? That's exactly what you said. It's the depreciation on the equipment and fixed assets, but we are reserving in capital fund for replacement of those items, as well as other projects. Let me let me phrase it a different way. Um, that seventy three thousand eight hundred sixty dollars from the 2018 2019 mm -hmm. year. Where where did that money? Was there a check sent somewhere or something was paid to that amount? No, it's just it's just taking all of our fixed assets and we have a module in Memric and basically um, amortizing their their val their life their um so taking another year off their life basically so casey can so i it's ask done. a question sure sorry does that i didn't mean to interrupt eric you still look like go ahead he always looks like that <laughs> <laughs> um but no i am curious about that casey so if we what you said earlier was that we don't necessarily know what our depreciation is going to be until we have an audit. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So when do we know that 2019, 2020 the number? After the end of the fiscal after year? After our 20, when, our, when they do our audit and, that, and run the numbers, take all of the thing and calculate what the depreciation is for on all of the fixed assets for the year. 
under the water fund, any assets that are in the water fund. So we can assume that'll be something similar to this year? Possibly, not necessarily, but um, depend. yeah, I mean, it could be anywhere from 50 to 60,000. The problem is, is that if you budget for depreciation, then it's going to make that 1.62 like 4% more, something like that. Well, and then, so, so, I mean, in a way yeah. we are budgeting for it because we have the capital, capital transfer. Right. Exactly. Not budgeting yeah. for, for things degrading. That's and, why uh, historically so. um, we haven't budgeted for depreciation because we do the capital fund transfer, which is in excess of what our depreciation is. Right. I would it's say sort of funny for me in some ways that the depreciation is just sort of confusing that it's in there. It almost could be like underneath everything else at the bottom so that we don't have to, but I understand what, what's going on with it. I think so. I totally agree. I find it to be confusing to have it in there because it's not an, everything else in here is an actual cash expense. Right. Depreciation. Um, yes, I, mean, correct. I mean, I understand, I understand correct. why, you, why, you would want to track depreciation in in a bookkeeping auditing sort of sense. I I get that, but in a mm -hmm. budgeting sense, what we need to know is um, what we're investing in our capital fund and and how things are depreciating depreciating in some theoretical fashion isn't really of use to us when we're budgeting. I would also comment, I mean, the only reason I, I put I, that in there is because when you run the report for actuals, I want the number on the bottom to match what it actually says. That's basically why I put it in there. Okay. But if I take it out, I don't know if you can see that it's 289 yeah. or 28. Yeah. That's helpful. Thank you. Kaylee, were you? Mm -hmm. No, I was just going to add that um, that seeing the capital fund and depreciation in the balance sheet is often like where you'd see that. So maybe that's why seeing it in the the kind of more cash flow of this budget is just confusing because they kind of cancel each other out, right, Casey? That's essentially what you're saying. Yeah, essentially yes, because we actually reserve more than what our equipment is appreciating, so. All right, yeah. sorry for the digression. Carry on. So I don't have anything more on the water fund. I made a few notes. Um, insurance went down, should see a reduction for the solar. We made a couple other small cuts where we um, were just trying to get the, get the overall percentage increase as really as low bare bones as we possibly could. Yep while still meeting the need. Yeah. And, um, you know, it would be great if you guys can decide on this tonight, but honestly, you don't have to. It, you could essentially review everything and vote on it at the June 18th meeting if you're not, if you still have more questions or still want to think about it. Um, we do still have some time. I mean, it would be preferred, but there isn't a lot of pressure. It doesn't have to be done tonight, but it would be good if you did. Hey Casey, so, I was wondering. 1.62 is what we're looking at for water. Casey, I was wondering yes. what um do, do you know historically what the increase has been in the water? La I would have to look it up. Last year we were right around percent. It's often been around between two and a half to three percent. Okay. Any more questions on the water? And then we'll go to the water capital. Okay, let's look at capital. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, 92,000 is what we're looking to put into capital. So here's the plan. Um, just roll over here. So there's a couple notes over here. We combined line upgrades slash new meters. And then there's another category that also says technology upgrades and meters, that's for existing meters. Um, so it has kind of our current balances and how we anticipate that splitting up the 92,000. 
Um, I do want to note that what we did was um, on the Bridgman bond, we have money in there right now. We have more than a year before we'll have to start making that bond payment. Um, and so we have enough money in there for a couple, well, more than a couple, a few years payments. So for the next few years, we did not put in the full like $17,000 payment because we already have some money in there just to sort of keep this at a manageable level. And because if you just, put the full bond payment, that would be 17,000 and that would really crank things up a lot. Just taking what, this is Sean, just taking one step back, the uh, technology upgrades and meters, you know, we have, uh, we, we are, we have a new meter project this past couple of years. We still have a number of uh, meter installs to do, but what we are trying to do here with this line uh, 21 is, uh, you know, there's going to be a point 15, 18 years out, maybe 20 years out where we're going to start to have to cycle in new meters to replace these as they go. So we're already starting to think about, even with this newer system, we have to be thinking about replacement some number of years out. That's the logic on that line. And the balance in that line that you just talked about is that what we have to is that thirty five thousand. What we have to work with to install the remaining meters. No, the the line upgrades slash meters, the one eighteen. That's for new. We combine line upgrades and new meters, existing meters, and other upgrades. Is this thirty five thousand right here? So we have one eighteen right. for new meters. Okay, great. Do we have a handle on how many are left to install? Because what was in it like? Uh, it was 70 before. Was yeah. It? yeah. 80, I thought it was maybe 80. Okay. It's, it's right in that range. The uh, variability is we have some uh, abandoned locations. So there's a little bit of variability there. But uh, just on this subject, um, we are, uh, what we're trying to figure out is um, if we can get the remaining done over the next two year time cycle. That would be relatively aggressive because that would imply uh, 35 or 40 this year. Uh, we have to, Tom and I and the, the water crew, we got to sit down and just have a look at, is this manageable and practical? Um, you know, we've got some other projects that we're going to be working on, but that's one of the things we're trying to strategize out right now. I think we're, we're all, you know, we've checked our pricing, we get our details. Now it's a matter of, okay, let's have a look at our construction schedule and see if the logistics work. We, we're obligated to get to this 100% meter capacity. It is really important. So, but we have to make it work schedule and budget wise. So there's, you know, competing factors there, of course. Can we assume that an undefined number of years, three to five years from now, that line 18 will disappear and that there may be, there will be additional money in line 21 um, but once the installation is done, that line is no longer needed. It sort of becomes upgrading all existing meters once we're 100% metered. Right. Yes, I would agree. Or it just line. remains as line upgrades. Yeah, line we upgrades. Always have, we always need improvements to our distribution network. Right. But there, there is the adjustment. So we are prioritizing to Wiz's point, and uh, we have that we have that capability built in. All right. So um, ninety-two. Questions yeah. Would we? Uh, yeah. No, that looks good to me. But anybody else have questions? All right. I just kind sure. of missed oh. something. Yeah. Did I um the for the estimated cost in comparison with the budget? Did I just miss the difference in that, or is that that was previous payments that were made? No, that's, that's no, that's very that's realistic. Um, so when so will we know if okay? Okay. Things like the, okay, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Casey, go ahead. Well, I think, I don't, I think, 
I didn't know if you meant like the cost of these projects and like that we're only going to have a million dollars in the next four years. Is that what you meant? Yes. So I can try to answer here. We're um, yeah. We're we're trying to. Explain that to them. Uh, so what we're doing here is a balance of we're doing our best to have some money available in, in a capital plan strategy. Uh, but for um, for a municipality, and I think this is going to be the case for any given business, you aren't necessarily going to be in a position where you have all of the reserves set aside. Uh, you know, if you're trying to estimate the life cycle of a, a given component or a given piece of equipment. And the way that um, it has worked in Hardwick historically and for other communities is, all right, look, we, we have to do a good job on our capital planning. We have to try to do these set asides, but there are gonna be instances of certain projects where you, you just, you can't uh, put this on the backs of the ratepayers. There's just not enough uh, available to do this. So what ends up happening, and we just did this obviously, uh, we had to do a bond procedure uh, for the Bridgman Roof Reservoir project. So um, here's the positive about this. Uh, you know, we were lucky enough to get a pretty good subsidy uh, from the Department of Environmental Conservation to help uh, ease, uh, you know, the expense for our users and our customer base. And um, we still, uh, my opinion is this, I've worked a lot of water and wastewater systems across the state given my previous career. The town of Hardwick does an amazing job of uh, capital planning and, you know, trying to look forward. So uh, let me give you another example. It's going to come up later on in the meeting, when, and we're going to see this when we switch to our wa wastewater budget. We've known for some time we're going to have to do a sludge cleanout project in the wastewater lagoon. That has been planned for for a number of years. We're going to be in a position, you know, assuming there's an authorization tonight, to take advantage of uh, our capital reserve that we have set aside so that there is no additional expense for our users. They have been paying for this, of course but there's no new expense to get this project taken care of. So just a couple thoughts. Right, so it's a, it's a bond that basically takes care of the difference. Um, like, yeah, so look, if you look at that top item, the well replacement, okay. you, 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 uh, to try to get to uh, half a million dollars uh, in the event we had to go after a new source, that's one of those things that you just can't necessarily set it all aside. So it's gonna be borrowing in some capacity to help close the gap. And hopefully you can get a reasonable rate and you get some grant to support this to make it a reasonable increase for the users and it's palatable for their pocketbook. Great, thanks for explaining, Sean. I would add to that just that um, the other, another way to think about it is that um, that there's a total balance right now of $611,000. And yes, it, that's allocated to a bunch of different lines, but if something dramatic happened and we had to, I don't know, drill a new well or fix one of the pump, like replace pumps, we could just take what we need to take out of that total pot in order to get the work done. So, I mean, it's not, I mean, ultimately we're saving toward all these things, but but some of these things we're saving for, we don't really know what the end point is. Like we don't know how long the pumps will last and that sort of thing. Or the reservoir, we have no idea. Like hopefully the, the reservoir lasts a really long time. <laughs> we, we've done a good job on Bridgman. So I think you're accurate on it's gonna be, a, it's a really good infrastructure project for this community. So yes, uh, barring no, you know, some catastrophic unforeseen thing. That, that's, you know, we've done a nice job on that, Eric. I, I feel comfortable with that as you do. I can give another quick example. Um, we had for years been, this community had been saving for the uh, Church Street uh, water line improvement project. And as it turned out, because of the income survey work, uh, the town got a significant subsidy to support that project. So uh, we actually, uh, we made a little bit of an adjustment on what you're seeing here, and it's right to Eric's point. The line upgrades uh, in meters project, which is now line 18 on what Casey has up on the screen, that actually was previously labeled as uh, Church Street upgrade. Well, the Church Street upgrade has paid for itself, so we can now make an adjustment on how we can allocate that. Right now, we have a need to finish our meter project. All right, let's take advantage of that reserve. This is the priority. It's a fuzzy, it's, it's a very fuzzy thing trying to look into the future and plan for, for everything you think you might need to replace one day. 
but as Sean said, I mean, I think generally we've it's it's worked out pretty well for us. All right, should we look at sewer? Yes. Hmm. We'll see where all the water goes. Okay. Okay, so some notes on this. Um, I had to calculate um, over time due to testing. Um, so I calculated that out at um, like dirt six months a year, it's four hours a week and six months a year, it's six hours a week. So I've calculated that out. Um, uh, Casey, real quick, this is Sean. Just so Casey, this is Sean. Just so everybody understands, we have to do this yeah. testing 365. It has to be done every day of the year. It's not like other um, other work where on the weekends you aren't necessarily doing it. That's why we have to work this in the budget so everybody understands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the LCT passive we saw the reduction in, um, again, some savings on electricity due to solar. Um, a couple of th other adjustments was the note payable from Mill Street. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that had been budgeted for to include the principal as well, but the principal reduction actually comes out of capital. That, um, so I adjusted that. We're looking at doing 94000 for this category versus ninety two with the water. Um, and the overall increase right now is 2.56. Um, I want to go back up here to the retirement plus gas fees. So gas fee is the government accounting standards board. Um, they, so what happened is I questioned, as you'll notice here, this actual of 73.22. I questioned the auditors about that because I said, well, that, that's not what we put into retirement. And they explained that. Um, so this gas fee, we'll call it, um, has a, calculation that has to be done and it's done with a journal entry in the sewer fund and what it basically is it's a net pension liability it's, it has to do with the fact that we pay into beamers which is a the retirement system it's it's like a reserve you basically have to reserve funds in case beamers goes under so it's based on a formula calculation. They do the calculation and have me do the journal entry. So it's similar to a depreciation situation. They do recommend that we budget for it. It's a recommendation. Um, and again, we don't know exactly what it is until the end of the year. It's similar to depreciation. Now we have substantial reserves, I would say. Um, so Sean and I kind of talked about it and said, well, if we don't budget for it, that 2.56 becomes 1.74. So that's sort of something the select board needs to think about. It, it really is just, it's not, again, it's just creating a reserve. So um, where, where is but, that reserve? But where again, we, when we get to the end of the year. Casey, if we budget for that, where do Well, it just ends up going back in. Sorry, say well, again. so if we don't, it's, it really just ends up going back to our fund balance because it's not a true expense. It's just like a depreciation expense. So if it's not a true expense, my two cents is I'd rather not have it in our budget. Me too. Particularly this year. You know, yeah. I can, I can understand at a time mm -hmm. when things aren't so tight, uh, when taxpayers aren't running up into you know the problems mm -hmm. that they are but for this year mm -hmm. i would say no so that that the uh, yeah so 1.74 looks better than two point whatever it was and that was our feeling too but we thought that it was important to <laughs> let you know about that um, option sort of and again it was a recommendation it's not something we have to do yeah. it yeah. certainly helps the budget if we don't well, There's one if, they bring it up again, if they bring it up again, tell them the select board discussed it and decided they were wrong. Right. <laughs> so there, it was uh, inconvenient this year. I think it's, it's confusing any year. Yeah. 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 
for, for what it's worth, the uh, Vermont Municipal Employment Reti Employee Retirement Plan is, uh, it is one of the uh, healthier uh, plans, uh, portfolios uh, as managed by the state of Vermont. So, um, you know, obviously some challenges economically now, but that's one of the strongest plans in the state. And I guess Casey and I talked about this and I said, well, if we got a problem with VMERS, we're going to have more significant issues in trying to keep up with our allocation yeah. on uh, covering this. That's just, you know, flip yes. comment, but that's where I was coming mm -hmm. from. Yeah. Did we have depreciation? Um, uh, maybe I missed it, but do we have depreciation in here? We did, there wasn't any. There Thank was no God. Expense here. Okay. <laughs> um. So. Okay, so questions about this one point seven four is what we're proposing then, and that's with ninety four thousand to capital over increase of six thousand over last year. That looks. That all looks good to me, but others? I have a, it's just a side question. When does the audit usually happen? When do they start showing up? Um, so they come, they'll come at the end of this month, presumably, or they may not come. They may ask for, they do like a pre-audit. Um, and then typically it's August, September, October, one of those months they give us, because of course we're on accrual. So we have 60 days after June 30th to like pay any invoices for this fiscal year or get in revenue that we can count in this fiscal year. So generally, um, it's usually like September. Last year they waited a little extra just because I had started in September. So they came in October, but usually right. probably around September, October. Although this year might be different still, but. Um, hmm. Correct. And I don't know if they're, how they're actually doing, if they're doing on site or not. I mean, we'll still get the same level of service, but it may just be remote. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it looks good to me, Casey. Okay. Okay, so let's move on to the sewer capital plan. I gotta go. Okay. All right. So here, um, balance right now five hundred seventy-nine thousand. About um, looking at doing ninety-four thousand, and then sort of increasing little bit gradual each year. I need to get over here a little bit. Um, so the bit, let's see, Sean, what are the big ones? Well, so the big ones is the future slip lining and sludge disposal, which is going to be talked about tonight. Um, why we have to sort of up that sludge disposal quite a bit. And the anaerobic cover cover are the big, and, uh, kind of big things coming up in what the next how many next, years? I don't know. Yeah, probably a year and a half actually. And Three then uh, lagoon liner. So this links back okay. uh, the the you know some of the highlights here link back to. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, I was given the authorization to move forward on the preliminary engineering report uh, by our uh, engineers. What they're doing as we speak is they're getting information in order to offer up, hey, here's the suggested 50-year uh, capital improvement plan for the wastewater treatment facility. So uh, they're helping us uh, kind of ferret out, if I could use that phrase, uh, um, prioritize is probably the better phrase to use here prioritize and uh, get us uh, really understanding with the engineer's assessment. Here's what we are suggesting for, uh, you know, this round of improvements for what you have in the footprint at your facility to ensure you're good for another 25 or 30 years. So I'm just looking at this and thinking that I believe the quote that we're going to look at later for um, sludge removal is closer to 200,000, I think, mm -hmm. and this is, it looks like we have about 100,000 saved. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, we have 108 and as of July 1st, 108 and then as of July 1st, we'll add the 14. So we've got like what, 122? We'll have yeah. 122 after July 1st. Yeah. So 
So what yeah. we're going to do, Eric, is this is the example of we're going to uh, we're going to take a little bit from some of these other line items to be able to cover the cost. Yeah. So definitely. we 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 would use some from the grit removal line item. Uh, we would use some from uh, plant upgrade. That's not a lot, but we get a little bit there. Um, we'll we'll go ahead and f we'll fill it in by pulling from some of these areas uh, to make sure we can get there. Didn't we just get a new grit removal system like two years ago? That's why we can pull a little bit from that. Okay. So we've had some improvements. So yeah. Um, okay. You you know one thing about the capital. Mm -hmm. Um, expenses is that the projects is that I think it'd be helpful to have a date on them so that you we know like how long we have to actually save for it you know some of these are more short term some of them are long term and I, I assume you have some idea in your head probably about when we'll have to do this work but yeah it's a good comment Lucy. well um, so sometimes we don't necessarily know but some we know sorry Lucy, uh, Casey go ahead I'm sorry no, I was thinking that the um, the study or the project that A and E is working on for the wastewater, particularly, is really going to outline that for us. What's it going to look like over the next? However, is it how far are they going out, Sean? Twenty five years or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's going to be at least that. So let me answer it this way: um, the uh, the plant upgrades. So with the work that we're having the uh, engineers work on now. What they're going to do, if you go down the list, is they're going to be covering the plant upgrades. They're going to be covering, uh, you know, is our generator adequate? Are they going to, they're going to be covering, what do we need to do on an anaerobic cover? They're going to be looking at, do we need a new boiler? Uh, is there anything more that needs to be done on our removal system? They're going to cover the aeration system. The sludge disposal is a separate project we're moving forward on now. Everything uh, from there moving down, uh, we can kind of put a date on and just generally talk about okay what's the strategy and you know what often works well is we move you know just put a little bit over there in the far right column under uh, you know beyond estimated project cost so um, you know as an example control panel replacement okay uh, we're going to do that in 2025 and as Lucian has pointed out we have that as a note field over here in this far right column uh, one other item that would count, sorry, that would count on what the engineers are working on now is the lagoon liner. We didn't necessarily have all this right in a segmented area um, just because this is how it's been laid out in the past, but some of these things are going to be uh, uh, automatically tallied up here, if you will, with this uh, report, as I've said. Right. Okay, good. Point taken. I guess on the water side, because they're not going to do water, right? They're just doing sewer, or are they doing both? Uh, just, uh, just the sewer is this particular focus on this project now. Oh, okay. So it'd be good to have our best guess on the dates on the water, probably too. Just, yeah, I, I agree with you. We're honed in on the water meter project for right now, but obviously we have other improvements that we need to be thinking about moving forward. Yeah, and some things. I mean, like. Uh, Lucian brings up a good point, I think, and some of these things we can put dates on, right? Like, absolutely, we probably have an idea for how long, when we think we need to replace the truck and the backhoe, and some things are just ongoing, like the slip lining, um, permitting, you know, permitting, yeah, and slip lining. We could put a note like we plan to spend whatever twenty five thousand every year or something or whatever it is. That's about what the target is, Eric. So you hit it right on the head. So, yeah, that'd be good to have some notes in here just on for both these. Yeah, so even if they don't have like a set date, even if they had a note that said something like you said, Eric, a certain amount that we spend every year, or just for us people that don't have our nose in it every day, so we can make yeah. sense of or even the things that are unknown, right? Like the pump stations on the water side, like those are, I think. My guess is those are pretty unknown when you're going to have to spend money on them. Right. I guess I guess a note could be put in about how old they are or something like that. So we have an idea if they're you know, they get with four years old or they fifty years old. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we could certainly add another column that says estimated completion date or something, and we could just throw out like if we know the year we anticipate that happening, we could put something in there or last replaced in X or something to that effect. Yeah, essentially a notes, just just notes about notes about the um, projected date. Yeah, we 
begin. For yeah, future. I can, we can plan on adding that in for time. Yeah. Yeah, for next year. Okay. Don't forget. <laughs> next year. Got it. We'll give you 12 months. Okay. So, any other questions? Any other questions about this? As I said, we really tried to make it as skinny as we could without yeah. compromising operations or our future capital projects. So, yeah. I think we it looks have good. 1.62 in water and 1.74 in sewer. Yeah, it looks good to me. Appreciate you doing that work on it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Tom, uh, Tom was obviously in on this, and so yeah. was uh, Ken Lacasse. So thanks to both of them for you know just going through this uh, fine tooth comb, and everybody just you know being really diligent about all right, let's be really uh, cognizant of where we are to tighten this right up. So they they helped us a lot on this. Casey, have you done any projecting? What is this going to do to the rates? We haven't worked on the revenue yet because we wanted to see, yeah, it's, we will have revenue budgets to present, um, but we actually have some time to do that because we've only built for three out of four quarters. And so we kind of wanted to see what the data look like and see where our revenues are um, in order to determine, because if, if our revenues look okay, we may not have to increase as much. We're, we're really, really hoping we don't have to go up, but we're gonna have to see. We're gonna have to see what the revenues look like after that fourth quarter billing. Thank you. Yeah. Obviously our goal is only to have enough to break even. We're not looking to make money. We just have to operate the system. So we only need to make what it takes to, to meet the budget. So that's what we strive for. So, okay. So looking at what's these, your pleasure? <laughs> looking at these budgets tonight, I'm mean, I'm impressed with the the uh, how essentially how clean they are and how well thought out everything is. And um, I certainly would entertain a motion to approve the water budget first. If people, if somebody wanted to make that motion for the total amount listed there on our screen. So moved. Second. So the, just for the record, the amount is $312,196 for the water budget. 1.62% increase. Yeah. Um, it, do we have more discussion about the water fund? Are people happy to move on this now? No, I'm good. Kaylee? Did we lose Kaylee? I don't know. My screen is weird. I don't know where everybody is. There are more people here. Oh, maybe we did. Yeah, I think it's because of the screen sharing. I think when I stop sharing my screen, everybody will come back. I think yeah, Kaylee dropped. I, Kaylee yeah. dropped. She's so, aged hard work. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, but we still have a quorum. Uh, so, any more discussion about water fund? We've got a motion on the table. Hearing none, all in favor of approving the water fund budget for the year 2020 to 2021 for $312,196, please say aye. 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 Lucian, were you there? Yeah, I'm here, aye. You aye. Okay, so that's four out of four of us who are, who are here. Kaylee, you're still not here, right? Okay. How about a similar motion for the sewer budget? Which Do we have the numbers up there yet? They're coming, I think. Right here. Should be right now. Is it not there? Oh, yes. There it a little is. little delay. Give it a second because I just... Okay. I move we accept the sewer budget for $463,533. I'll second that. 
So any, any more discussion on the sewer? All in favor of approving the sewer budget, please say aye. 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 All right, that's all four of us. Kaylee, you're still not here? <laughs> Just checking. Because I have to roll call people if they're, you know. <laughs> Just checking. All hey, right. So my, my computer's probably going to die here before long, so if I disappear. I'll, that's I'll, why. I'll call, all in right. I'll, I'll call in if I get a chance. We'll see. Maybe we'll pick up the pace then. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Casey, for, for presenting that, and thank you to everybody who worked on it. Sure. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna stop chair. Okay. So now we're gonna move on to item four, which is um, to review the resolution um, for uh, and we should we can resolve to sign the amended re the amended loan agreement for the Bridgman Reservoir bond for an increased amount. We have the paperwork for that. Um, Sean, is there any backstory on this, or we're just up a little bit? Um, hang on, I'm opening this up. Yeah. Uh, no, that's so. Uh, the backstory is we initially went in at 420, but then we had the select board authorize some additional spending. So this, uh, that was the additional 75,000 that the select board authorized. And that was the recommendation of our engineers because of some, uh, just some cost uh, that we were concerned with the timing of this, if you will. Um, this, uh, the beauty of this uh, approach is, and we did talk about this, if everybody would recall, um, we had this discussion way back about, okay, we've, you know, we bonded for 420. Do we use our reserve and use that to spend for this additional up to 75,000 that might occur? And what we decided then was, no, let's, let's go ahead and legally extend so that we can be in the end bonding for the full amount. Uh, it could be up to 495. The uh, positive thing about this approach is that now our subsidy will be applicable to the entire 495,000, which is uh, Casey, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're locked in now. We got the notification we're at 30%. Correct, which would be 148.5 in subsidy. So we're if we grant go all the way to 495. So we got, the grant, we got the grant applied to the additional 75,000 is the point I'm trying to make here. Yeah. And we don't know if we'll go all the way to 495, but this secure, we've been approved to go that high. We have already exceeded the 420. And just um, real quick on that, there's a handful of punch list items. We're getting toward the end on the uh, you know so-called yeah. turnkey. We're getting there. So um, it looks like um it asks for the chair of the governing body to sign in addition to the clerk and the treasurer yeah and then there's a couple and then further down there's two other well three other spots two of them oh, where yeah. the whole board or the majority yep. of the board signs as well I think. um I can help on spots, this here. Yes, and then one other spot for the treasurer. So I can I can meet or you can stop by however you want to go about it, Eric. Yeah, but we need to get everybody, it looks like, on some of these. So if I have to do some uh, So if everybody has scanning capabilities, if like send the page and yeah, we can one person signs, scans it to the next, and anybody that is able to stop by, we, we can make it work. Okay. You can always yeah. stop by. Yeah. Stopping by is easy. I can bring it to folks as well if needed. Okay. So do we, um, so I would entertain a motion that we, um, that we agree, that I guess that we agree to the, the loan agreement with the Vermont State Revolving Fund for a loan amount of Four hundred ninety-five thousand dollars and all its um, and all its appendages here. Um, so moved. Is, is that, uh, oh. that we resolve to sign 
the amended loan agreement, right? Yep. Yep. So I guess I'm a little confused. So is that up to 495 or is that 495? Yep. Up, to. up to. So so it might be a little less in the end. It might be, yep. Okay. We do anticipate it being less unless there's unforeseen okay. circumstances, but yes. But what we're but the motion on the table and what we have to approve is is for that four hundred ninety five thousand amount. Okay, yeah, and so the amount depends on the outstanding work. Is that what? Yeah. The actual amount. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, sounds good to me. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. No, that's good. So we have a. Mo Sorry, who made the motion? Sherry. Liz. Liz. I seconded. Liz made the motion. Okay. So, um, any more discussion on the um, the loan uh, uh, resolving to sign the amended loan contract? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. That's all four of us who are here. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Next up is. Um, Item five is the restart Vermont loan and grant program memorandum of intent. This is the one where um, we are sort of joining forces with other communities in the state and the Agency of Commerce and Community Development in order to sort of pool together uh, revolving loan funds. And this is a memorandum of intent that we would, if we choose to go forward, we would sign this and um, join that group. Um, Going, my understanding is that any actual loans that we were asked to make would they still come through the select board? So um, this is just an intent to join. But then, if we do join, then we still have approval um, authority over any individual loans that come to us. Can I have yes. a comment, Eric? Yeah. Um, just want to remind the select board that uh, with the support of ACCD, we have just recently secured $986,000 in grants from this agency. So just want to make sure you're thinking about that. <laughs> Not to put too fine a point on it. Yes. Well, I think this is also an opportunity for us to um, join together with other communities and be part of a larger solution for the state and without really giving up any local control so and maybe I move, yeah i move that we sign the restart vermont loan and grant program mem memorandum of intent i'll second that more discussion all in favor please say aye 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 all right, so that's all. And uh, so there are only four of us here still, so that's everyone. Thank you. Next is item six, is discussion about the advance notice for the AT&T cell tower. Um, basically, they are still, uh, well, they've gone ahead and given advance notice to the Public Utilities Commission or the Department of Public Service. I can't remember where it goes. Um, but it's PUC. My, it's PUC. But my, yeah. the, the latest information that we had, I think, was that they still hadn't satisfied um, Hardwick, Hardwick, Hardwick Electric terms for service up there. So, so we don't really know Whatever, it's proceeding in some fashion. And this is just an update, I think. Are they bluffing? No, I don't think so. I think they really, they have this um, first net funding and this is a place they could spend it, is my impression. Um, I think that but, they just. Yeah, they don't. still have to do all this stuff for Hardwick Electric and that's a lot of stuff they have to do. Yeah. Right. It, so. That is, it is acknowledged, uh, just real quick, this is Sean, it is acknowledged in uh, this pre-notice pre uh, information. What I was curious about, and I just talked to Eric about this, is, well, I'm not sure what 
you know, what would the town's action be right now if we're still waiting for them to demonstrate that they can meet the HUD construction standards? I, I'm not sure, you know, what do we do right now? They still have to meet the construction standard. So this detail isn't lost in translation. When you look at the advance notice, they are just, uh, they're doing their diligence and notifying the municipality about their intentions, uh, that they are gonna go forward on official filing of the project. And so the select board hears this and everybody else who's watching, um, you know, on this particular item, it was issued April 28th. So there's a 60 day window if there's anything in particular. That deadline then is June 27th. Sometime after that, they could move forward with their uh, official application with the uh, Public Utility Commission. So that's it. Yep, we discussed it. Right, so this is just like public information and so everybody knows what's going on. That's it. Right. Well, I think and a reminder for all of, sorry, go ahead, Lucian. Well, I just say the, the pre, pre notice or whatever they just gave, really the only way it affects us is that we had, that gives us a window for comment if we chose, if we chose to comment. And since we're kind of waiting for them to get sort of um, figure out what they need to do for ATD that um, if we chose to comment, I don't know what we'd say, but that, that comment period is going to run out while they're still working with ATD. I think you're right. But, uh, yeah. I think we already decided that we, we'll, we'll wait and see if they, what they figured out with ATD before we. Yep. That's the only thing that we can really do. Uh, as a friendly reminder for everybody, I had this up and I just misplaced it. Let me just double check this. So for, uh, for anybody who needs to access the information, the, uh, hang on, I'm getting my link going right now just so I can validate this for everybody. We uploaded everything having to do with the uh, pre-award, uh, pre-advance uh, award, excuse me, notice. And all of that information is up on the town's website right now uh, in the select board section. You would scroll down to the minutes and it's directly to the right of the May 7th minutes. So there's, uh, there's everything listed in that area. The town manager's office has copies as well if uh, anybody needs to see additional information. Perfect, thank you. All right, next is um, item seven, select board authorized town manager to proceed with wastewater facility clean out project. And as actually already foreshadowed in the uh, sewer budget discussion, um, we have a... I move that we authorize our town manager to proceed with the wastewater facility sludge clean out project. I'll second that. And uh, that's great, thank you. And um, just to have it in our minutes, the total cost, projected cost on that is, anybody have it up? 204,978. And that's to clean out all the sludge, because we've done, in the past, we've done um, like just a partial clean out. That's the, uh, that's the main receiving lagoon. Uh, it is not a entire comprehensive uh, get everything out. It's the one where we're at a critical capacity and it needs to be taken care of. And obviously the next question is, why aren't we going after everything? We're gonna work uh, some of the other sludge clean out into our, uh, this capital project that we have just discussed. Well, the other lagoon, one of them we did do some clean out on recently. That's correct. So, so maybe um, the other one's in better shape. It is. Uh, yeah, okay. it is. Uh, one okay. of the uh, there is a wild card factor. We don't think it's an issue, but the one that the portion of the lagoon that has the anaerobic cover, basically what that means is there's a cover over the top of the lagoon area. The uh, that cover is deteriorated to a state where we're not comfortable putting anybody on top of it. We're afraid they're going to punch through, and that's a worker safety issue. Uh, the last time we did some checking, the sludge was very reasonable in regards to the depth. So our best estimate with uh, the most recent information we've got is we're in a decent position in these other areas is how I would answer the question. Right. So we're cleaning out everything in the areas where it's critical. That is a correct statement. Okay. Sounds good. Just checking. Yep. Can I also so add? 
real yep. quick, we've, we've been getting uh, good support from uh, Wayne Graham at Vermont Rural Water Association, my previous firm. And then in addition, um, I, we have been collaborating with Alder Chin Elliott on this. And then in addition, we, we did join on a project with another firm. Uh, Hoyle Tanner had a uh, contract with the state of Vermont to assist on some phosphorus reduction projects. And Paul Olander is the contact there. He's a longtime DEC employee. Then he went into the operations industry. He's an expert on lagoon processes. As a part of the Hoyle Tanner project, he is actually going to be helping do kind of clerk the works and assist us at no additional or extra cost. So we've got a really good opportunity there for some additional cost savings. And he he, he is at, he literally is the national expert on lagoon processes. So we're in a really good position here on this. Great. I was a little That's it. unclear on the on the it looks like a, the the paperwork you emailed us out today. Um, it says the total minimum project cost is 100 dry 100 dry tons. There's 200 and basically 205,000, but it looks like they estimate that there's 244 dry tons. So does that mean we're up to 400 and something thousand? No, nope, we have uh, already communicated on this that uh, we only, you know, we got to do the best we can do um, as many dry tons as we can get. Yes, that range is shown, but we have a not to exceed that we're going to do on this. Oh, okay. And what's, what's the not to exceed? 205,000. That's that. Okay. Yeah. So it's the minimum that they're listing. Yeah. Now. Yeah, there is a wild card on this in that um, sludge is a really challenging thing because you really don't know what you're going to be into on densities and volumes. So it's a really tricky one to try to range out. And um, I guess that's as much as I would offer right now. The firm knows we got to be as efficient as possible. This is where Paul is helping us on our operational processes to try to uh, get the uh, sludge as thick as possible is, is basically the in layman's terms. And uh, we go from there. So we're already working the strategy out. Paul's assisting us on making sure we're lined up with Department of Environmental Conservation, uh, you know, doing what we need to do to get ourselves in a position to take care of this this summer. We definitely need this to be done. Great. So um, we have a motion to authorize the town manager to proceed Sign, sign the documents, proceed, all that. So um, all in favor of, of uh, authorizing Sean to proceed, please say aye. 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 Okay. Oops. Aye. This oh, is Kaylee, you're back. Kaylee's back. <laughs> what was Doug saying about internet in East Hardwick? <laughs> he said it's perfect. Oh. You shouldn't worry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nice. Well, thank you for dialing back in. Um, we're, you're, we're nearing the end. So um, next is select board reports. Oh, uh, you still have to do. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I jumped ahead. That VLCT thing. Don't forget it. Yeah, it's, that's new business. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Report. Uh, any reports? Yes. Um, the Historical Society decided at our most recent meeting that we will open the week of July 1st. Um, masks are required. Um, if you have questions before we're open, feel free to contact me, edow1, at earthlink.net, um, and we'll do the research for you and get back to you with the answer. Great. I'll just report hardwick trails are very nice and a lot of people are using them, which is, a, I think, a good thing. Cool. Uh, so rolling into new business, <laughs> Cherry. Uh, it's the VLCT local government resolution. I don't remember yeah. what else. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically the email they sent um, and the, with the resolution VLCT is lobby, lobbying our congressional delegation to um, to support um, more direct funding for local municipalities um, that who have been negatively affected by the COVID-19, um, I think is the gist of it. That's what I got from reading it. Hmm. So 
if we so, if we choose, we could uh, resolve. You know, we could so resolve and sign their resolution and send it back to them. So Our I'll Senate. make the motion that we um, resolve to sign their local government resolution. Yeah, <laughs> I'll second that. All right, local government. Let me just pull up the title of it so that we have it. Yeah, I, yeah. I think in some respects, this kind of ties in with this, uh, some of these ongoing discussions about are we going to see uh, some kind of stimulus funding moving forward? We want to make sure we're uh, yeah. there at the table as a municipality for sure. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to read the very beginning of the resolution so that, um, so resolution, all cities, towns, and villages in Vermont are essential and Vermont local officials support fair and direct federal emergency aid to reopen and rebuild local American economies. And then there's a lot of whereas is, and then resolve that Vermont local officials call on Congress to allocate a fair direct amount. This funding should be flexible. Um, local governments will, you know, do the right thing. Funding to keep workers employed, et cetera. So I'm not gonna, I mean, we all are able to read it, so. I'm starting to tally just some of our um, uh, some of these projects so we heard a little bit about this already tonight you know the roof on the townhouse we know we're going to need a roof on the historical society we know we have some of these other projects that um, you know we shovel ready is the catchphrase you know we're trying to get ourselves in a position where if we have some of these projects and we have uh, some stimulus money that could uh, potentially be taken advantage of uh, we'll try to be at the table Okay, so we had a motion to adopt the resolution from Sherry. Yeah, Sherry. Second. I second. Okay. Any more discussion about the resolution? Hearing none. All in favor of adopting the resolution, uh, please say aye. 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 I think Kaylee dropped again. No, I heard her. My bad. She voted aye. Okay. Oh. Thank you. I'm here. We were, Sorry. We, were, we were unanimous. <laughs> we were unanimous. All right, thank you everyone. Um, excellent, so back to the category new business, which brought us here. Um, the only other thing that occurs to me that I'll bring up for new business is uh, when do we wanna consider meeting, when does this body wanna consider meeting in person again? As soon as possible. Yeah. I mean, certainly we could be at the townhouse if we wanted to, um, I, you know, have if more we wanted space. to set it up for that and have just a little more space. I think that's totally possible if you feel like the upstairs at the Memorial Building is not quite big enough, especially yeah, if anybody it, wants to come. It might not feel big enough, but nobody ever comes, but you have to plan yeah, they, for them. The other thing is, uh, uh, I talked to Leaf about this prior. He and I didn't need to go over the, didn't get a chance to go over the logistics. But uh, I know DRB did meet, and they actually used the larger room upstairs. So we we you know we have that opportunity as well. But the right. select board's discretion, obviously. And we ha it's it just let me say this: it is important. We do our social distancing. Uh, you know, we're going to have to have masks. Um, it's, you know, there's going to be some challenges here. Um, and then, um, uh, we, you know, we still might need to limit number of attendees. So it may be that we're there in person. Uh, I guess the way it goes these days, if we can get Hardwick TV involved still, you know, I guess what I'm getting at is maybe we have some kind of a Zoom component of this still, but trying to work back in, it's encouraging to hear this discussion. You know, one thing I wonder about, and I, maybe it's logistically not possible, but if we can meet outside, anywhere we can meet outside if the weather's decent? Yep, I was thinking exactly the same thing. So we I can mean, also the, meet on the lawn, the, you know. Yeah, we can meet on the lawn or even down, I don't know if Atkins Field, they have the pavilion down there, and then we'd be under if there was a little bit of weather. Well, we need, uh, we'd like to be where ACTV can broadcast, so that yeah. limits us to yeah, I mean, the townhouse has the, the, the feed or whatever, but as long as he has Wi-Fi, do they have Wi-Fi down there at the pavilion? They do. Yeah, so maybe he could do it. Yeah. Leaf, got anything to say about it? Yeah, it's possible. Um, I could just record it, too, 
and then broadcast it the next day. So, um, you know, the pavilion might work as long as there's light. I can do it. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, as far as going live, uh, it depends on the internet connection, how good it is. It's about 15 to 20 megabit. At the pavilion? Yeah, when I checked it, I went through and it was about 15 to 20 megabit. Now That's going pretty good. Slower, so. It's way better than mine. <laughs> Not to influence the location of the meeting, but uh, this is Sean, not to influence the location, but I, I think um, if I have my information correct, I think a lot of folks in advance of COVID-19 were regularly tuning in to a live select board meeting. So just for what it's worth. I guess I would also say that while I think the outdoor meeting is appealing uh, generally and because, um, you know, it seems that the coronavirus is less likely to be transmitted outside. There's also some information coming out that it's less likely to be transmitted inside if you have good airflow. And we have lots of very large windows in the upstairs of the Memorial Building. Um, I guess I was more thinking for yeah. outside maybe, I don't know what the mask protocol is outside for official stuff, but it seems like we might not we might be able to not wear masks if we're outside. Ah. Is that a possibility? Well, as long as we're far enough apart. Right. I mean, if we're six feet apart. So could we do this for tonight, since I'd like to wrap up? Could we say that we want to meet in person next time and the details to be sorted out between now and then? Yeah, it sounds yes. good to me. If we want to meet outside, we could also meet outside in the lawn between the townhouse and the depot. That way we're not subject to the traffic noises from Route 15. I was thinking the same thing. That's a pretty nice spot. Mm -hmm. right, we're at the know. mercy of the weather, though. Well, you could sit on the porch of the depot. Yeah. Watch the trains go by. Yeah. <laughs> Before we hang up, could I add something to new business after we finish this conversation? Yes. Let's. OK, this conversation is finished. Go ahead, Kaylee. I just wanted to make a comment that, um, and maybe I missed a part of it, um, but it did seem like we got a lot of um, community feedback about um, taxes and uh, support for businesses. So maybe we can add that to our agenda next next time, um, unless it was already talked about. We did not. I, um... <laughs> and and maybe we don't need to. I just wanted to bring it up because it was seemed fairly mm -hmm. significant. Okay. Well, we did not have a discussion tonight, so we could have a discussion next time. And maybe it's just an update from the town offices about it. Ah, okay. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, I, I'm just going to cut to it. I mean, as the root of the discussion, um, you know, what we did is we held the line on our due dates and, um, you know, the, the on the property tax payments and um, that, I mean, that's something that just, uh, we did decide um, the state law change came after uh, or just about, the, it was just after, I guess, uh, due dates. Um, just, uh, yeah, it was after. Um, that's the, that's the basis of that one, right, Kaylee? Yep. Yeah. I just felt like we should mention it during the, during the meeting. I appreciate that. And we've also had, I mean, just along those lines, just to mention it, we've had um, forwarded to everyone. I had a conversation with one Hardwick resident who's just concerned about this next year for taxes. Yep. And so. Did that person understand that the fees and penalties are all set at the state level, that they are not under Hardwick's control? It becomes more complicated right now, though, Liz, I think, because after ours, I don't even know how you would navigate it exactly, but after our deadline passed, the state legislature allowed the municipalities some flexibility in that regard. But I don't know, I'd have to, I don't know, I don't know if that's retroactive, I don't know. It's not with the information at hand. Okay. I think with the notices going out, um, I think the select board probably will receive more questions and more concerns. And so I would, I mean, 
in my opinion, I think I would agree with Kaylee that maybe um, add it to the agenda if necessary, just to explain to people that the deadline was May 11th um, and we're not necessarily in control of the penalty and interest. Because um, I, I feel like there's going to be a lot more concerns for you guys. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. And and along those lines, anybody watching or listening who does have cons uh, who who missed their tax payment, they should definitely reach out to the um, town manager's office and the town clerk. I think be the town manager's office, Eric, for clarification. And Amanda is leading up this. One thing that's sort of on this topic, but is another conversation that we'll have to have, obviously, down the road. But the economic impact of this thing's going to continue rolling, and so as we go into the fall, and we sort of lucked out in some ways that the that the taxes, our taxes are doing the work, but we're going to have to consider really, you know, obviously taking into huge consideration doing the budget next fall, and if there's some way for us to, um, you know, ga gauge that impact while we're making the budget next fall. I don't know if there's some way we can do that, you know, beyond just our own anecdote of what, we, what our experiences are. Yeah, you're right. It's going to be hard to gauge. Yeah. So um, we um, just closing out this fiscal year, you know, we're trying to be as frugal as possible. And then it's a common discussion we're having, um, you know, with our department leads now. Um, uh, let me just pick on one example. You know, we talked earlier tonight about our paving. Well, that's a pretty significant line item in this next fiscal year. We're, we're not committed to spending that entire line item out right now because we have to be cognizant of this is going to moving forward. And you know, I completely agree, uh, you know, this next couple of years, if not more, are, are going to be tight. Right. Well, hopefully we'll know more in the fall, but still. Uh, it's tricky. It's like when we're talking about setting our wa uh, water and wastewater budget and then we're still trying to close out the revenue side. It's, you know, you don't necessarily have the looking glass to know where is it really going to, you know, where are you going to end up? And I just got to be tuned into it and uh, be as frugal as possible, I guess is what I would say. Yep. So, all right. I, I, have, I, I have one I, old business question. Do yeah. we do we know does anybody know if we had any any kind of real participation as far as green up day went? It was confusing because they, they changed the date and then um so I just didn't know whether, you know, normally there's a distribution of the, the bags and there's a, a kind of a plan and people are down at the but I don't know, did it really happen? Yes. Yeah, I can speak to that. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Sorry. Go. No, you, you got it. You were probably. Oh, no, I was just going to say that the that, um, yeah, everything went great. I wasn't there personally, but there were um, at least three folks from the Hard Work Rick Committee um, and folks out with green bags and um, everything okay. went well. Good. I'm glad to hear it. That's great. I just didn't see a lot of action, you know, because it's just quieter in town and it's hard. It was hard to tell whether people were getting out. So that's great. Good to know. What I was told is that it's about the same as last year. As, as oh. far as we expected, so. Good. Very good. Any other new business or old business? No. Nope. And um, motion right. to adjourn. Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm. oh.